Hello, welcome to Indie Dev Tools. Today, we are talking about the canvas. When making games with JavaScript, it will usually be presented on an HTML5 canvas in a browser window. I personally use Chrome for development. A canvas is just a drawing space on a web page that we will be using for video games. This will be a brief overview of the canvas operations I find useful for making simple games and prototypes. We will cover shapes, images, transformations, and compositing. We may need several canvases for a project, so we'll start by writing a function that creates one for us. First, we create the canvas, then retrieve the drawing context, which is an object that knows how to draw on the canvas. I find it useful to make the context a property of the canvas so I can pass both around at once. Here, we adjust the size of the canvas to the values passed in when the function is called, or the default values in the function declaration. Finally, we return the canvas. Now we can call that function to create a new canvas and get the drawing context. Appending a canvas to the body of the document will make it visible on the web page. Then we tell the context to fill the entire canvas blue, just so you can tell it's there. Shapes are drawn by defining a path for the context, then telling it to stroke or fill that path. A path is just a series of straight or curved lines between points. Quadratic curves require one, and Bezier curves require two control points to shape their curves. Close path finishes a shape by drawing a line back to the first point. Use the arc function to create circular paths. It needs the xy location for the center of the circle, the radius, then the start and end points of the path around the circle. A full circle is 2 pi radians, with 0 being the rightmost point of the circle counting clockwise. The final argument is a boolean telling the context to draw clockwise or counterclockwise between the two endpoints. The rect function creates rectangular paths. It needs the location of the top left corner as well as the width and height of the rectangle. If you only need to fill or outline a rectangle, there are fill rect and stroke rect shortcuts that work exactly the same. The clear rect function used for clearing the canvas also works the same. You can set the fill or stroke style to a linear or radial gradient by defining the two endpoints of a line or two circles respectively, then defining color stops between them for the context to ramp between. Text works just like the rectangle shortcuts with stroke text and fill text. You set the font, text align, and text baseline on the context. The top of this diagram shows the different text baseline parameters, with the red line being the baseline. And the bottom shows the possible text align parameters, with the red dot being the point at which the text was placed. The default baseline is alphabetic, and the default text align is start. Drawing shapes on the canvas is good for prototyping, but you will probably want to use images for a finished product. First, we need an object to hold all of our assets. Then, we need variables to keep track of how many images have loaded, and how many need to load. Each time load image is called, it increments our assets to load variable. Then we create a new image object to hold our image. After we set the image's source to the file path provided, it will begin to load asynchronously. We will need to set the image's onload callback to our load handler function, which will trigger when the image has finished loading. These three lines separate the file's name from the file path and file extension, which we then use to store the image in our assets object. Load images takes an array of file paths and calls load image on each of them. Load handler increments our assets loaded variable as each image finishes loading, and if it is equal to the number of images we need to load, then it calls load complete. Load complete is where you will tell your game to begin, or level to start. For now, it will do to show you some image drawing code. The draw image function has three different forms. They all take an image as the first argument. 
The first then takes an x and a y value to position the image on screen, plain and simple. The second also takes a width and height argument so you can scale the image. The third takes all four of those values, but only after four others, defining the region of the source image to draw. Here is a brief example of the third form being used to animate a sprite. Animation will be explored more deeply in a future video. Instead of an image, you can provide the draw image function with another canvas. If you want to draw a lot of shapes in your game, it will probably be best to draw them on an off-screen canvas, then use that as your source image. That way, the context doesn't have to calculate the same paths repeatedly. Next, I will talk about canvas transformations. Canvas transformations are how we rotate and another way to scale things. But to do it properly, we also have to position things this way with the translate function. This moves the origin for the context by the amount you supply, so things drawn at 0, 0 will now be shifted by that amount. Using the rotate function, you will notice that things rotate around the origin, 0, 0. To rotate around the center of something, you must reposition it, typically at negative half the width by negative half the height. The scale function will change the size of the image or shape you are drawing, including things like line width. Make sure you scale after you translate so you don't scale the amount you translate by. Here we are scaling down the image to a fifth of the original size. JavaScript allows you to put things together in different ways with blending modes and composite operations. They are both assigned to the global composite operation property of the context. The blending modes have the same effect as in Photoshop. Here, I create a linear gradient from black to white, and for each blending mode except the last three, apply it over top of DaVinci's work. The last three use a second gradient that is red to white. The save and restore functions undo any changes made to the context in the lines between them. The other composite operations seem really useful, though I've rarely used them. The problem is that they are destructive and tend to wipe your canvas, and don't all work properly. In this example, I create a buffer canvas where the shapes are composited, then that buffer is drawn to the screen. Of these, source out, source atop, destination over, and destination out don't work properly, while destination in acts like source in, and xor acts like source atop is supposed to. The context also has a global alpha property, which controls the opacity of what you draw. This isn't necessary if you are drawing shapes, as you can use RGBA values with fill style and stroke style to make them transparent. Image transparencies are drawn correctly, as you may have noticed with the Gumbot sprite sheet. The global alpha property will make anything you draw transparent. The final thing I will show you is the clip function. If you create a path and then call clip, everything drawn after will be clipped to the interior of that path. You can see here that a circular path is created with arc, clip is called, then the image is drawn visible only inside the circle. I actually had to stretch the image a little vertically for the circle to fit just right. And that is all for our primer on the HTML5 canvas. We covered drawing shapes with paths, drawing and scaling images, transforming the context, and some handy compositing techniques. What do you think? Have I missed any canvas operations absolutely vital for simple games? Do you make games entirely with shapes? Let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe. Next video I will talk about vectors and how useful I find them when making games.